let's speak dog. Good night, I hope this Monday finds everyone well. Um, keeping everybody, saying that everybody stays safe. We are working in my living room tonight. I have Portia with me, and you'll see, notice I pulled out an ottoman. For those of you who wondered what I just did with Savvy, um, she was barking in her crate. I teach all my dogs from, their, from when they're puppies <coughs> that when the crate cover goes down, it's rest time. When the crate cover comes up, it's time to do things. Um, so I just actually went in and just closed the cover on her crate. She just got done eating. And that's why her barking has stopped. <coughs> All right, <clears throat> I got Portia. I have my ottoman. I had on my um, virtual classroom tonight that I was going to work on next stages of crit games and pause up. Uh, I'm going to work on the pause up portion, but I thought I would have more light, and I'm a little afraid for the other piece that I wanted to work on tonight. I was going to set up outside. And Darby, thank you. Um, I'm going to lose the light, so I figured it was going to go dark on me before I finished. So I'm going to change our classroom curriculum, and then when I save this tonight, I will um, actually, I'll change the name of it. So I'm going to start with two things um, that are just fun. So we went off, we went with four paws up. So this is four paws up. She's giving me four paws up. It's not what I want. I want two paws up, paws up. But, um, so we worked on two paws up last week and we used, I used a little uh, feed tub that I flipped upside down and I brought this in because I wanted something that was a little higher tonight because um, I wanted you to see some practical uses for having paws up. So she's here okay. and I need to check her eyes. I need to check her teeth. Good girl. Good girl. Very good. Thank you. If I need to um, check into her ears. Good. I can do all of this with simple elevation. It makes it a lot easier if she's here than if I'm on the ground. Um, it also creates a stationing effect. So just like when you're working on your place behavior and your dog goes to your place, lies down, and stays, um, if you teach two paws up as a station, <coughs> excuse me, then what you have is a settled dog when you're trying to work on things like teeth, um, good girl, good job, that was nice, good. Giving eye drops, if you have a dog that needs eye drops. For those of you with toy breeds and small breeds, um, this goes with four feet up. You get them up and elevated. Teach them to come up on that elevation and you'll have confidence and a dog that's much more settled and it's easier for you to do basic husbandry with. All right, I can also here, if I wanted to work on nails, um, um, it's a little easier for me. I could also sit and work on this. Can you see She's going to come up with four feet. I haven't taught her to lie down on this particular thing. Um, but I could also go four feet up, and that would be the same for a small dog. And the way that you teach this is that four feet or two feet is basically the same way. She's a lore. All right. Pop. Her word to get up on something or up in something is just hop it up, the girl. So she hops up, up, good girl, wait, pause up, good. So right now I'm working the difference between two paws up and four paws up, all right? Um, you guys have seen Portia before, she's kind of a fast, oh, good girl, she's kind of a fast mover, so I have to catch her and be careful and get that marking quickly. Pause up. Good. So as soon as those two paws come up, I'm going to mark that. If I want to teach four paws, I can oh. I want you to also notice now yeah, that as she gets off, I'm working on my off cue. All right, we worked on that for telling my dogs to get off counters. So as she's going off, I'm actually naming off. So I'm accomplishing a number of goals in a simple five-minute training session. Um, for those of you who have had issues with guarding on couches, and you may have spoken with me and we've talked about um, changing your rules, uh, and that we want the dogs or the puppies to only come up onto the furniture if they're invited to come up. Um, so an up cue is four feet up, 
And then the off cue tells the animal to get down off of the furniture, get off of the counter, get off of whatever they have put their feet onto. Um, so I'm going to recap this again. Frank. Frank. It's okay, Frank. Keep going. So pause up. Pause up. Oh, they're all four. My mistake. Bad timing. Pause. Thank you. Good girl. And that's okay. We're just going to do it again. Good. Two pause up. Good. Off. Yes. Good. Off. Good. Okay. And now four. Ready? Okay. Good girl. Good job. Four pause up. And then I want to cue off. Off. Yeah. Nice job, baby girl. Very good. Sit. Okay. So pause up. The um, the two pause. <laughs> now she's super excited about sitting on the album. What are we doing? Um, the two paws up. I use for my um, car. I have a, a truck. I've got so many dogs. So I, for the larger dogs that are uncomfortable jumping into the truck and into the crate, because all my dogs are crated when they drop when I drive with them, um, for safety, I have a paws up cue. So they put their two paws up, and then I lift Ben for Julian, because he's not so sure about his big body getting jumping up into the truck. He's not super confident about it. Um, so instead of pushing that for him, it was just easier to tell him pause up. He puts his two paws up, and then I just lift him in. Um, the girls, all the girls actually jump in. But as they age, it's still nice, because my old dog, although she would try to jump into the truck, um, I don't want her to jump into the truck. So she has a pause up cue so I can lift the rest of her body into it. I'm always a little worried. Um, she's 12. And I don't want her to jar herself or miss or slip just because she doesn't have the agility that she used to have. All right. Good girl, Missy. That's better. Good golly. Good. Okay. So since we're not going to work crate games tonight, um, I'm going to instead, I want to work on teaching a chin rest. I like to te teach a chin rest for a number of reasons. Um, one, chin, good. Um, if my dog has a chin rest, it stabilizes their head. Good girl. Good, yes. And I can take that target. It's just simply a chin target to my hand, and I can transfer that to other things. Um, so I'm going to start teaching the chin rest. It's really easy to do. I'll do it with a clicker, and then I'll do it with a verbal. To do this, I'm going to put... In my hand, I'm just going to have some cookies in my hand. Yes, that's a good choice. Never, always work that it's your choice. Leave it alone, gang. Why not? Yes, good girl. I don't want her jumping or grabbing for this since she's elevated. So I've got cookies in my hand, and I have a clicker in that hand. With the other hand, I have nothing in it. I'm going to place the empty hand underneath the dog's head, and then I'm going to simply lower this. So I'm going to take my hand, bring it down, and when I feel weight, good, I'm going to mark that and reinforce it, okay? Good. Good. Okay. So now that she's giving me that behavior, I'm going to name that behavior, all right? And I'm going to shift and do this with a yes instead of the click so you can see both. A mark is a mark. It doesn't matter what mark you use. You use what's, com what's comfortable for you is most important. So you as the trainer aren't worried about, did I click wrong? Did I get, you know, that's the beauty of marker training. If you make a mistake, everybody gets over it. All right, I've got my cookies in this hand, and I'm going to put this in as I feel weight. Yes. And then I'm going to mark. Now you'll notice when I do this, I keep my hand here. So the dog wants to move a little bit forward. Yes. Girl. As she moves in forward, my hand is not grabbing her muzzle. Thank you. Good girl. All right, I'm not doing a muzzle grab to hold her there. I'm not forcing her head to stay there. Thank you. Yes. As I do this to this dog, to Portia, notice each time that she tolerates my rudeness, I'm actually reinforcing her so she gets comfortable with it. All right, here's my cookies. Here's my dog. Chin. Yes. When I feel the weight is when I'm going to name the exercise. Good girl. Beautiful. Good. Chin. Yes, that's it. Good 
good girl. I want to know if she really understands this and she's just not being a super sweet, tolerant girl. Allowing my hand to be here, here, here. She will do that in here, right? Good girl. If I want to know that she's understanding that chin target, then I'm going to put my hand up, pull it back a little bit, and then ask her to chin. Chin. And I want to see her move into that hand. Chin. And she says, I'm not sure that, there it is, yes, good girl. As soon as you feel a little bit of weight is when you're going to mark it. So I'm going to go back to my clicker because this dog learns more easily with the click. And I'm going to have her target my hand again. Good. Good girl. Good. I should say my timing's better with the clicker than the verbal. Good. All right, now that she's got that, I'm going to cue it. Nice, good for you. That was a good enthusiasm there, girlfriend. Chin. Good girl. And now I'm getting active engagement, so I've named it. Frank. I have no idea. This um, video is landscape to me, and I can't see the little your comments. So um, if it is landscape, <laughs> I will save it, download it, and then put it up in the correct way so you're not looking sideways. Um, so I'm hoping that it's landscape and not the other way around. So, <coughs> thank you. I'm going to have my dog, I'm going to have my knee, and I'm going to work on her resting her head on my knee as a way. Come over here, honey. Good. Sit. Good. So this is something that I've taught my therapy dogs. So they rest their head on a bed or rest their head on a leg. All right? So, <coughs> this couch is so low. So just like we did that behavior before, I'm gonna slowly lower my hand. All right, chin, good. So I'm gonna name it, I'm gonna bring my hand down. Chin, good. Chin, chin. That's it, good girl. Tall dog, small person. Chin, chin. This is why you are not the therapy dog of the house. All right, too much enthusiasm. Good girl. All right, so I can teach her to actually rest her head on my knee. I can also teach her to rest her head on a station. Bring this ottoman back out. Come here, kid. See if I can keep her off it. Over here. Come here, kid. There you go. Sit. Sit. Off. Sit. Four shots. Off. Okay, so I have her here. I'm going to start with my chin rest, good girl, and I'm going to bring my hand lower. Chin. chin. Good. Good girl, and I'm going to bring it lower. Chin. Good. Good girl. So if she's dipping her head at the moment. I'm going to take that behavior because it's working toward the end behavior. Place your head here. I, I know. We were working on touches for tribal earlier. Okay, so I've got my dog. I'm going to take my hand, lower it. Chin. Good. Chin. So I'm still using a lure to help her with position. Chin. Off. Sit. Good. So if she gets too excited, I'm just going to put her back into a sit or a down, just a control position, to help her get her brain back together. Um, that excitement's adrenaline. She loves to do things and she wants to be engaged and play with me. And when she gets that adrenaline going, then of course she's not thinking as well. So I don't worry about it. I just want to work, get her head back into, you know, her brain thinking again, calm her down a little bit, and then I'm going to reset. Chin. Good. Good girl. Good. So now that I'm beginning to get the chin behavior, and you would do this over a course of, you know, five, eight days, so I'm not gonna, I'm showing you all of the pieces. You'd have to take each one of those pieces and slowly work through them. Um, I wanted you to start with this tonight, chin. Good. Good girl, chin. And then start to work when she gives you that chin, chin, good girl. Start to work on it. Good girl, good, good chin. Getting her used to being held lightly, touching, 
Good girl. There we go. Nice job. Very good. I want to be able to say chin and look at her eyes. That's it. Good. Excellent job. Nice work, honey. I can also use this. I'm just recapping what you can use this for. Grab some more cookies. she starts to get this, then yeah. you had it, I know. When she starts to get that, I'm going to actually start to work on adding duration to it. So just, that's a girl, good girl. So using the target, I'm going to bring it down, my end goal here, besides a happy dog, <coughs> is to actually have her rest her chin on this. What would I use this for? I could use this to target when I go off to her therapy visits. I can target the edge of the bed for her to rest her head on. Jen, that's fine. Okay, start that. Just relax, you can do it. Oh my gosh, I completely lost her. Um, and this is why she does do therapy dog work. She wants, she likes to actually go and perform. Um, she's a lot of fun to watch and to play with and the residents at nursing homes enjoy, um, enjoy her. But if I have a really good chin target, come here, chin, good. I can actually have her target the edge of the bed, um, a patient's knee, um, the arm of a chair, so that she stays stationary and they can just pet her, okay? Um, and it brings up something really good when, it, when you're thinking about therapy dog work. You just a little aside note for tonight. Um, is when liking and enjoying people is awesome. And this dog likes people. She likes. She also likes to do things and she's busy. So if I were choosing from the dogs that I have to go to a nursing home um, or uh, one of the hospital wards where we have patients that have issues with mobility um, that might have difficulties, this would not be the dog I would work with that for, right? So instead, I would take Savvy or I would take Jocelyn. Um, they love staying stationary and being touched. It's something they really enjoy. This is a fun dog to take to children's wards when we're looking for things that are interactive because she'll, she has you know, 50 different tricks that she knows. Um, she loves kids. She likes to be touched and petted, but she really likes to do things. Um, so I would do a, something with her, I'm taking a look at the dog in front of me, I would want to do something with this dog that had activity related to it. So just something to think about um, when you're choosing a dog for therapy work or the type of therapy work you'd like to do. Um, if you have a dog that just enjoys being touched, you know, they like to just sit and have people touch them all the time, that's a great dog for uh, wards with people with mobility, for um, Hospice, they're always in need of dogs for therapy work at hospice. Um, and nursing homes, you know, the, the residents oftentimes do want to touch and just have someone to comfort them, have an animal that will comfort them. So a calm dog is a great idea. Um, but I know, you had so much fun tonight. Okay, to recap what we started with, let me just, uh, hi. We started with two feet up. We refreshed our off cue. Um, yes, that's lovely, I know, off. Yes, good. I want you to know that I took the food and took it out of the um, picture. I want, once they learn, once your dog has learned, oops, lost my camera here. Once your dog has learned 
how to do the action or you're using a food lure. I want to feed that lure in one to two trials and not have the food taking the dog where I want to go. Let your dog make the mistakes and make the choices. Um, this one, go ahead, good girl. So here I want paws up. I've got no food in the queue, paws up. So I'm going to wait for the action. Can you pause that, please? <laughs> she said, no, we were just working on chin. Pause up. So my food's back here. And yeah, she knows it's there. Good girl. Good girl. And I'm going to use off. Good. Get the action, then mark. All right, once they understand the cue. Four feet up. Up. Good. Good girl. Very good. All right, and then we're going to end with chin. Chin. Good. Thank you. Good. And then I'm going to work on moving that hand to get that chin. Good. I'm still using um, a little bit of a food lure, and I'm going to take the lure out of my hand, chin. Nice. Good girl. She's starting to put that piece together. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for the virtual classroom tonight. I know my head got cut off here. Uh, I will upload it if it's sideways, and I will see you guys all soon, I hope. Take care. Thank you.